This is Pad 2, the brand new Starship launch pad. Just two years ago, this site was nothing more than an empty stretch of land with a small test stand. A year ago, the only structure here was a chopsticks stack. Now, from that very same spot, a massive launch pad has risen. Pad 2 has already completed several major tests, each designed to prove its readiness for service. With this progress, it's set to play a crucial role in ushering in a new era of change for Starship and the future of space exploration. So how far have preparations for Pad 2 come? Let's find out together on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We're now in the second half of 2025, which means SpaceX is only a few months away from officially entering the V3 era of Starship, provided everything stays on schedule. The V3 version of Starship promises significant upgrades in design, capability, and performance. But for a new generation of rockets to succeed, the launch infrastructure must also evolve, and that is where Pad 2 comes in. Construction on Pad 2 began in 2024, and in just over a year, the transformation has been remarkable. What started as a bare area has now grown into a massive, fully equipped launch pad with advanced systems. Every major component has been improved compared to Pad 1, including the OLM, the water deluge system, the protective systems, and even the iconic chopsticks. Together, these enhancements are designed to handle the power of Starship V3 and its new Raptor 3 engines. During the same period that SpaceX was carrying out tests for Flight 11, Pad 2 also began its own series of critical trials. One of the most important was the activation of its new water deluge system. The first test took place on the 13th of September with a modest spray of water from the flame trench system. This was only the beginning. More powerful tests followed on the 18th, the 19th, and twice on the 22nd as well as twice on the 24th. In these tests, water was discharged at both ends of the flame trench with each spray lasting around 30 to 40 seconds. In total, nearly 400,000 gallons of water were released. To put this into perspective, the burn duration of a rocket during liftoff is shorter than these tests. That means the deluge system not only met expectations, but also demonstrated more capacity than required. This level of performance will be essential when Pad 2 supports the incredible 9,000 tons of thrust generated by 33 Raptor 3 engines firing simultaneously. The flame trench itself is a defining feature of Pad 2. It has a history in rocket with similar systems used on NASA's pads decades ago. But SpaceX has taken the concept further. Unlike Pad 1, which relied on a water-cooled steel plate directly exposed to the force of launch, Pad 2 incorporates two flame buckets that double the system's working capacity. These trenches are built from networks of small pipes that release high volumes of water, cooling and dispersing the energy of launch. Their tilted design diverts the exhaust plumes away from critical structures, protecting the pad from the immense pressure and heat. This approach provides far greater durability compared to the steel plate on Pad 1, which required frequent refurbishment after only a few launches. Pad 2's flame trench is built with a focus in long-term sustainability, ensuring that as Starship becomes more powerful and launches more frequently, the infrastructure will not fall behind. Of course, the flame trench is only part of the story. Other systems on Pad 2 have also been put through their paces. The Booster QD system has undergone opening and closing tests, verifying its reliability in managing propellant flow to the rocket. The chopsticks, perhaps the most iconic element of SpaceX's Starship infrastructure have been tested continuously since last year, practicing the precise lifting, lowering, and securing motions they will need to perform during stacking and catch operations. With these foundations in place, Pad 2 is now preparing for its next phase of testing. Up until now, no tests have involved full-scale vehicles or direct engine fire. That will change soon, as SpaceX may begin by installing a single engine on the pad for activation trials. Following that, a test tank equipped with engines could be placed on Pad 2 to push the systems harder. Ultimately, the most demanding trial will come when a super heavy booster with 33 engines is mounted for testing. This could be the official V3 prototype with Raptor 3 engines, or SpaceX might first use one of the existing boosters, such as B-17, which currently sits 
at the production site and is unlikely to fly. These trials will mark the true demonstration of Pad 2's capabilities, testing the OLM, Flame Trench, and Water Deluge under real launch conditions. As the debut of V3 approaches, these tests are essential for proving that Pad 2 can safely and reliably support the next chapter of Starship's journey. Looking ahead, October and November will likely be the most active months for testing at Pad 2. If everything proceeds according to plan, the pad could officially debut in December of this year, just in time for SpaceX to roll out its first V3 mission. So the question now is simple. Are you ready for Pad 2's debut? If you are, let me know with a number 2 in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on every step of SpaceX's incredible journey into the future. Pad 2 will not only serve as the foundation for Starship launches, it's also marking a breakthrough in one of SpaceX's boldest ambitions, and that is catching Starship itself. After two previous iterations of the system, the company is now moving forward with the determination to catch both stages of the vehicle in the V3 era. This requires not just one platform, but at least two, with Pad 1 designated to catch the Super Heavy Booster, while Pad 2 will likely take on the challenge of catching the Starship upper stage. To prepare for this, SpaceX has been extensively testing the Chopsticks system. These giant mechanical arms must demonstrate incredible speed, precision, and flexibility to capture a massive spacecraft descending from orbit. The challenge of catching Starship is even greater than catching Super Heavy. Unlike the booster, which performs a short ascent and return, Starship must complete an entire orbital mission. It must deploy payloads, withstand the fiery heat of atmospheric re-entry at more than 1500 degrees Celsius, stabilize during descent, and then align perfectly with the chopsticks for a controlled landing. Supporting this ambitious plan, the FAA recently released the draft-tiered environmental assessment. Within it, SpaceX outlined a proposed trajectory for Starship's return to the launch site, with V3 landing operations expected to begin in 2026. The document also notes that SpaceX may conduct more than 20 catching flights per year, a frequency that would push the system to its limits and demand exceptional reliability. This means that the chopsticks and the entire catching infrastructure at Pad 2 must be reinforced and tested thoroughly in the months ahead. Musk has suggested that the first attempts to catch Starship could occur between Flight 13 and 15, which places the milestone in early to mid-2026. However, those attempts depend on the success of earlier missions. Flights 11 and 12, for instance, must prove that the vehicle can ascend smoothly, carry out its orbital objectives, re-enter safely, and land without incident. Meanwhile, the chopsticks themselves must withstand repeated operations without sustaining damage. The road ahead is indeed filled with challenges, but the payoff is historic. If SpaceX succeeds, Pad 2 will not just launch Starship, it'll also catch it, marking a new era in reusable rocketry. The next few months will be critical as this remarkable system moves closer to its first true test. Beyond its immediate role, Pad 2 embodies the long-term future of the Starship program. The systems and innovations proven here are already beginning to influence other launch complexes, setting the foundation for a new generation of infrastructure that will support hundreds of flights per year. A clear example of this expansion can be seen at the KSC Pad LC-39A in Florida. Originally designed with an older OLM, or the construction there was halted midstream so that the new flame trench and OLM system based on the Pad 2 model could be installed instead. Once complete, this pad will be capable of supporting Starship missions directly tied to NASA programs. If work progresses smoothly, LC-39A could be operational as early as 2026 with a proposed capacity of up to 44 flights annually. Nearby, the pads at Space Launch Complex 37 are also being prepared for Starship operations. They're expected to incorporate a design similar to Pad 2 with the added ambition of eventually scaling up to a Starbase-style configuration that includes two full launch towers. If realized, this site would be responsible for as many as 76 launches per year. Current progress suggests that SLC-37 could be ready by late 2026, making Florida a central hub for both government and commercial Starship flights. Meanwhile, back at Starbase in Texas, Pad 1 is preparing for its own transformation. After supporting the launch of Flight 11, which is expected to be the final V-2 mission, Pad 1 will likely undergo modifications to align more closely with the Pad 2 design. Upgrades could include replacing the water-cooled steel plate with a flame trench, installing a new OLM 
M and adjusting the chopsticks for greater efficiency. These modifications may be rolled out in phases. For instance, the chopsticks could be made ready for catching Starship early in the year, while lower structural changes continue in parallel. Looking ahead, the Pad 2 model will likely expand further as Starbase itself grows or as SpaceX takes over new launch complexes. Future pads may also include taller towers and stronger systems to accommodate the larger vehicles envisioned for the V4 era. This network of launchers will be essential for meeting the high flight cadence that Musk envisions for Starship. The importance of having multiple active pads can already be seen in the success of Falcon 9. With three operational pads, Falcon 9 has become the most frequently launched rocket in the world, often flying multiple times per week and occasionally twice within a single day. Reusability amplified this efficiency, and now Starship, being fully reusable, could elevate this capability to an entirely new scale. SpaceX projects that Starship could eventually support at least five launch pads. With such infrastructure, Musk's bold vision of reflighting super heavy every hour, flying Starship daily, and reaching a rate of up to 10 launches per day during key Mars opportunities becomes conceivable. Pad 2 is the blueprint for that future. Each upgrade tested and proven here will ripple outward, enabling the construction of more capable, more resilient, and more flexible launch systems around the world. With this groundwork, Starship operations promise to become not just powerful, but transformative for the future of space exploration. And now it's clear that a new era is beginning for the Starship launch pad, and Pad 2 stands as the very first symbol of that future. Its testing has already shown promising performance, but the path ahead remains filled with challenges. Powerful trials are still to come, and in the next two months, preparations will accelerate at an intense pace. All this work is building toward an ambitious debut at the end of the year, which will also mark the transition to the new version of Starship. Many changes are coming quickly, and each milestone will shape the course of what lies ahead. Stay tuned, because the story of Pad 2 is only just beginning. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.